All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode number 288 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am BF Baller, and I had another topic I was going to talk about first, but this came across the wires as I started the, the show. So I said, you know, I'm going to go back, I'm going to re-record this. So this is more of a priority in my opinion. I think this says a lot about what is going on in Atlanta Falcons, uh, you know, in the front office, it's really going to be really telling, but I'm going to give you my take on it and everything and let you know where I stand with all of this. Um, welcome once again to the first and frame rate show. I'm the Avala over here. I talk about Georgia Southern Atlanta Falcons football, but today we're going to talk about Atlanta Falcons football. Um, I want to just let you guys know this is still new for me. I've been doing this for at least a month and a half now as far as the daily shows Monday through Friday. And I want to thank you guys once again. You guys are awesome. I can be found on all your podcast platforms. If you're over here on the YouTube side or the Rumble side, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're on the podcast side, give me a high star rating and subscribe as well because you can get this instant access to any of the uploads that i put up also if you do find it in your heart or whatever you love the content that much you can always donate the cash app is down in the description as well as the uh di i'm about to say discord i'm sorry as well as the anchor um link where you can d donate on uh, either way so the, the vf baller 20 is my cash app hopefully you guys you know can check that out at least consider it and either way it works out as long as you're here listening i'm very satisfied either way all right now let's go ahead and get into this because i you know I, I i have a lot to say about this the Falcons release veteran linebacker Dante Fowler. Dante Fowler, um, I talked about his contract situation on the salary cap episode we did, and I was wondering why his um his salary was a little different than everybody's. And I, and I remember, I think I remember saying that it's somewhat incentive based. Well, apparently that was the case. Uh, he reworked his contract with uh, you know, he reworked the contract going into 2021, and he his cap would hit um let's see let me go back let me go back because i'm reading it right here. i'm gonna put the link in the description it's on espn.com about them releasing them he said taking a pay cut in the 2021 season as part of the reconfigured contract didn't fail to hit any of his incentives that were placed in a deal he played 14 games he started six and only had four and a half sacks now the four and a half sacks is the leading number for the falcons we only had 18 the entire year so it was like when really it wasn't a good year for pass rush um he uh he had incentives incentive markers in his contract one million dollars in bonuses starting at five sacks so he was a half a sack behind as a part of a rework contract entering 2021 it meant that his cap hit would be more than 29 million you know that's if he would you know they couldn't do anything about it so therefore it you know therefore uh it, it's just something that he couldn't hold they couldn't hold the 29 million dollar contract so he reworked it to get his uh, uh make it more incentive lace well he didn't uh you know he didn't reach any of those incentives you know they basically he only had four and a half sacks um he played 14 games which you know not too bad but overall in the last two seasons he played a combined 28 games starting 19 of them then registered only 59 tackles and seven and a half sacks so he, had, he only had three sacks last year so i i think at the end of the day my son is here say hey everybody Hi, oh, okay all right back up for a second i don't want you to hit anything um so he only had three sacks in, in one year and four and a half the next so it was kind of weird and you would think that he would want to play more to get that incentive in some games, he only played 50% of the time or of the snaps or less. So I was like, all right, what are we doing? I mean, I understand. I think he had a, a hit with COVID a couple times. You know, I also thought that he had some other issues when it came to, um, you know, just being injured. So it never really worked out the way I thought it would. You know, I, I just thought that, you know, he was going to be here and do very well. Did get a couple of strip sacks, which was awesome. Got one on Tom Brady in one game, and he had another one in another game later on. So I thought that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I thought he was going to be pretty prominent for the team. But I understand why they let him go, because they reworked his contract. He only had to get five sacks and a million dollars, and he would have a million dollars. He had four and a half, and uh, he just didn't work out. And I know a lot of people... Atlanta Falcons fans are really, you know, happy that he's gone. I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not really, I'm not really tripping on this. I mean, but I will tell you this much. <clears throat> 
now the Falcons really need to do something with this pass rush. I think it's a priority now. I think it's a priority because I think this is something that they probably was looking at the entire time anyway. I don't think Dante Fowler was going to be coming back, you know, especially after him not making those incentives based on what I know now. But looking at the mock draft of, you know, um, Stingley from LSU, I, I talked about that in the episode where I thought he actually was going to be the number eight pick. I'm more inclined now to think that they're going to get somebody as an edge rusher or a linebacker that can rush the quarterback, something of that nature. I don't know who it's going to be, but it's going to be somebody of that nature because everybody say that, you know, they released him as a line. He's a, he's, his position is linebacker, but I think the Falcons had him down as an edge rusher. So that's another thing you may want to think about because, like, you know, this is something that really would, um, you know, there, there's something that they really want to, uh, you know, address because we don't get anything. You know, we don't get anything as far as getting out of the quarterback. Dante Fowler was our best, you know, he was our best asset to pass the rush the passer. He only got four and a half sacks. Now, also in this article, it says that cutting Fowler will leave the Falcons with 4.66, uh, 4 million, 4.6 million basically in dead money for 2022 in their books, but will free the club the majority of the inflated deal. So it is for me in the dead money, but I think they're going to come out on the back end where it's still going to be a positive for them. So um, it's one of the things that you want to, you you don't want to end up with when you are dealing with free agency or, you know, cutting players. You don't want to have dead money on the books because you really can't do nothing with it. Now, I know somebody else told me that, you know, you can move stuff around, but I, I, me personally, I just never want to have that. I mean, we, st we still had that with the Julio Jones situation. So um, now I'm telling you right now, the only people that we have is uh, Ogan DJ, James Barter, and John Kaminsky as outside linebackers. If you want to look at a linebackers uh, situation, as far as his position, but as far as edge, ru edge rushers, I don't, we don't, we don't have too many, anybody, you know, I think he was like the only one that I can remember. Now it could be some other ones that are on here. I mean, that are on the team that, that, that I don't really know, but that's how prominent or lack of not really prominent that the pass rush was for Atlanta. These guys are going to, I, I, I really feel it at this point. These guys are going to, go pass rush they're probably gonna get more than one throughout the entire draft but um i'm just sitting here just thinking like all right this is a party now this has to be a party because uh you just don't have anybody else i mean i can go look at the roster i'll try to check and see we can look at that real quick and um see what they have i'm, I'm looking at it right now and as far as the depth chart, I'm going to, I should go to the Atlanta Falcons website. But uh, the first one pulled up was ESPN. And uh, we got Jonathan Bullard as an edge rusher. We also have great, no, not Grady Jarrett. No. Well, they have Grady Jarrett. That's a, on a 3 4 defense. They got Grady Jarrett as an uh, edge rusher on here. So that, that got to be wrong. We got Marlon Davison, uh, Mike Pinnell. John Kaminsky, Nick Thurman. We're, we're going to be drafting an edge rusher at this point. I, it, it, I think we're getting an edge rusher at number eight. And, I mean, all the speculation. I think um, Scott Bear at AtlantaFalcons.com did a two-point old draft, and they have us picking an edge rusher. I kind of see where this is going now. He probably had some insight knowing that Dante Fowler was probably going to get cut, and this is the way to go. I, I And I really, honestly, I don't have an issue with it at this point. I just, I just truly feel that with what we have here, and we're not going into next season with Jonathan Bullard and uh, Grady Jarrett playing uh, as edge rushers right now. Or um, even if you look at the linebackers who can rush, you have Brandon Copeland, which, you know, I do like him. Uh, Foya Luakon, no telling he's going to still be here. And uh, let's see, Steven Means. It, it, I, I I don't know, man. It, we're we're going to get somebody that can do a little bit of everything. You know, I like Dor Dor Dorian Etheridge. I like him as well. Emmanuel Ellaby, and he was um he was injured. But uh, I like I said, I I just don't see anybody out here that can actually that's going to be um wing out uh, inside linebackers or wing linebackers. Uh, you know, I I just don't see it. I don't see it. It, it. We we're going to have to get somebody that can probably stand up and rush the passer, or probably do a little bit of everything as far as going on um on the line as well. So um also you look at free agency. I can pull that up as well. Let's see. 
let's see who, uh, who could be prominent to pick up as a free agent in the uh, as far as um edge rushers and right now i'm looking at this on pff.com uh let's see they're talking about a lot of wide receivers because there's a handful of wide receivers von miller is 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 out there I don't see us getting Von Miller. He, he's going to be Chandler Jones is another one. I don't see us going after him. Uh, I'm trying to think. Hey, Mike Williams is a, uh, I didn't know Mike Williams was going to be a, a free agent. Allen Robinson. I, I knew about that. Jesse Bates for the Bengals. Really? So they got a handful of uh, Jadavian. Cl- Never mind. We, we're not even going to talk about Jadavian Clowney. Absolutely not. Randy Gregory. He can't stay on the field. Um, let's see who else we got here as far as, I think those are the prominent ones that are out there. Uh, so, um, maybe, you know, I, I mean, we might not even get nobody in free agency unless somebody really wants to come here. Melvin Ingram. Now Melvin Ingram might not be, a that might not be a, a, a bad one. And he's a little up there in the age, 30 years old. Dante Fowler was 27. But if you're looking for somebody that can get, you know, production and, and have some depth, depth, you might be all right. You know, it, you know, so that that may be a good that may be a good a good look right there. Trying to get somebody like a Melvin Ingram or whatever case may be. But all the other ones that I named, I don't see that happening. You know, I just I just don't see it happening. I'm, I'm going to keep scrolling down a little bit longer before I, you know. Yeah, uh, Hassan Reddick for the Panthers. You know that that could be a that could be a good one. I mean, he has a you know size is a little bit of issue, but no nah, that 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 you know Hassan Reddick, Melvin Ingram. So those are the two that that could possibly do something as far as getting somebody in free agency. But um, as far as the draft, you know, um, if Hutchinson is still there, go get him. Uh, if you know, I want to see who else is there. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Sorry for the hold up. Let me see. Let me see. Is it up here? It's, uh, bear. There you go. Mock draft 2.0. Real quick. Um, David Ajabo. I think he's an edge rusher. Yeah, edge rusher out of Michigan. So if if if, if Hutchinson's not there, then you probably looking at um you're looking at David Ajabo. And, and like I said, I don't I don't see an itch i don't i don't see a problem with this maybe a little bit reachy maybe a, a bit reachy but I, I think he'll be all right you know because he can he can play a little bit of everything when it comes to that uh that area he can uh work he can play outside linebacker or he can also play edge rush that's what he, they have him as edge so that you know either way i, I don't see where you know, the Falcons are in a bad situation as far as the pick of talent. It's just that you want to get somebody that's want to be here and want to fit because we already have a situation now, which I don't want to talk about with the Calvin Ridley situation. That's trending on Twitter right now. I, I don't have no, no, no interest in talking about that right now. I already talked about it. Go ahead and trade them and that's it. But I, I don't think that'll be a problem on this end right here. It's, it's just for some reason it's like us and wide receivers just don't get right when it comes to the Falcons. But so um, the, uh, David Ojabo, you looking at him, you looking at possibly some free agents when it comes to Hassan Reddick and Melvin Ingram. I do like those two um, as far as, you know, getting us somebody in here that's actually that, that that's proven and actually can do some things. Um I don't know. One thing about Melvin Ingram, I mean, he won eight million, so he may he he may want eight million dollars. That that might be a little high for the Falcons. Depends on what type of money they're looking at. Uh, as far as Hassan Reddick, uh, he gonna want more money because he's younger. Who man? And I'm just looking at pairs, but I'm just when you look at the money, like I don't know. But he man, I don't I don't know. It's it just I I. I I just know now that this is a priority. There's no way around it at this point. Pass rush is a priority right now. And um, I see them probably going into the draft, getting um, an edge rusher now because I'm looking at what we have in the free agents. Uh, It's kind of iffy. The draft at number eight, you know, if, if like you never know who may drop to you. Um, I know uh, shout out to, uh, Shout out to Juju on Juju on Ju Talk Sports. 
Shout out to Jew. He does a pretty good job on his channel. You should check him out. Just type in Jew Talk Sports. He, he, he'll pop right on up. He actually talked about getting Kevon Thibodeau, which is another um, person that I wouldn't mind getting. I think Smitty talked about that as well. You know, it's, it's some pretty good Atlanta Falcons content creators. I always like to shout them out. They're, they're really cool people. But, um, yeah, the, Thibodeau, <clears throat> uh, you also have Ajabo. I don't, I don't know if Hutchison will be around at number eight. Um, I personally think that um, I'm not really sure if he's worth the number two pick because they got the Lions picking him. I, I don't know. I don't know. Aiden Hutchinson, Aiden Hutchinson is good, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not really sure. But I, I think it's just a good fit because of location. But when you look at the the talent, the, the talent is there. There's a lot of talent when it comes to edge rushers. Nobody really stands out. So who's really losing depends on who you pick up. You know, Kevon Thibodeau, you looking at Ajabo, and you're looking at Hutchison, the three edge rushers out there in the top 10, that's actually pretty awesome. It just goes to show you how deep this, uh this you know, how deep this, the talent pool is when it comes to edge rushers. So I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, I don't have much else to say about this. I just feel that with uh, Dante Fowler, with him being released, pass rush is a priority. It, there's no there's no other way around it now. Now, we just went through and looked at uh, the free agents, looked at the draft, uh, who's available. And um, I think the Falcons are in a really good spot at number eight to get somebody who could possibly get at the quarterback. And you really want to see them do something. I'm still a little skeptical because, like I said, there's no Chase Young. There's no Bosa. There's no guys that are just, you know, coming out the woodwork. They're saying, look, this guy's a sure pick and it's going to be a top ten pick. All three of these guys that, are, that I just named are good, but I'm not sure if they're that good. But then again, you could turn around and get somebody like a uh, – Oh, what's his name out of uh, Las Vegas? You can get somebody like him. Oh, man, I, he played against us in, in Georgia South. Not I forgot his name that quick. I'm not good with names. <laughs> I know y'all already know I'm not that good with names. Um, you know, he's number 98, Raiders. Max Crosby. My God, I should have known that. You can turn around and get another Max Crosby. You know what I mean? Max Crosby was a fourth-round pick, and look at him. He's one of the top pass rushers in the league. So you just never know. Um, at the end of the day, I, I do trust what, you know, Arthur Smith and what uh, Terry Fontenot are doing. They've been out there scouting at the at the Senior Bowl. I'm pretty sure they know what's going on with the other guys who are not at the Senior Bowl. He's probably had an eye on a couple of these edge rushers. And I think right, right now, there's no doubt right now. There's no doubt about it at this point. Falcons are getting an edge rusher. Falcons are going to take an edge rusher. That's just point blank. Not after this news, the Falcons are going to take an edge rusher, and I'm here for it. Can't wait to see what they do. I'm probably going to look and really evaluate all the edge rushers. I, that, but, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but I, I think they're going to take one at number eight. Let me know if you guys think it's going to pretty much uh, conclude this episode. You know, not much going on uh, outside of this. I was going to talk about some Georgia Southern stuff with uh, – you know, Clay Helton and Jared Banko really sitting down and talking about what they're going to do on the, on their one-on-one interview talk. It was a phenomenal interview. Um, you can go to the Facebook page, Georgia Southern Athletics. You will find that interview. I highly recommend you look at it because I didn't talk about it. But um, like I said, it, it, it's really good. I really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate the, the love that they're doing at Georgia Southern as far as actually giving out so much information of what the coaching staff is doing to get you so excited. And um, hopefully this gets you excited. Hopefully you enjoyed all of this uh, content on this episode. Give me your thoughts and opinions about Dante Fowler. Do you think it's good riddance? Do you think they should have kept him uh, with him being gone now? We have some optimism about the pass rush. Do you think the pass rush is a priority now because of Dante Fowler being released? Or do you think they're just going to probably try to find an edge rusher in free agency or wait till later in the draft to get somebody else? At this point, I feel like at number eight, the Falcons are probably going to try to get an edge rusher and um, they're going to start trying to get some pressure on the quarterback. And we'll see how 2022 start to shape up with these moves in the draft and the free agency. We'll see how all that goes. All right, y'all. If you like this video, hit the like button, share this video or share this podcast. Subscribe to the channel. If you're on the podcast side, give me a five star rating and subscribe to the channel.
you guys are awesome you guys are amazing i really really appreciate all the love and support and i will see you guys on the next one oh if you want to donate you can always hit all the links at the bottom uh in the uh description i really appreciate you guys listenership is up and it's all thanks to you all viewership is up and it's all thanks to you all all right y'all see y'all the next one y'all take it easy y'all be blessed peace